I have a, a very silly story to tell you. <laughs> I was young, maybe my age, 14, 15, somewhere there. I'm traveling with the, my father with the horse. I knew my uncle, Lama Shavarong. He's a, that's amazing. He's holding his dinjuru, which is my representative in Tibet. His monastery. Mm. Then one day, he had an interview with the one, mm, I'm not really sure he's a monk or not, but a, you know, shaved a, a very rough, he has a goiter. Older. Then after his interview, he left. My uncle told me that person is a his body is a human, but his mind is a Buddha. Then I'm interested. I didn't pay attention before. I really want to see. I say, it's what look like a Buddha. <laughs> <laughs> then I went to the kitchen, he's having tea. I looked at the round. Doesn't look <laughs> good at all. <laughs> he's older, kind of lots of wrinkles, and body is not a state, and has a goiter. He's having tea. <laughs> I thought, that's a weird Buddha. <laughs> you know how silly I am now. <laughs> Still I am. <laughs> but, uh, you know, like that kind of story. Then, we're not uh, recognized enough. We're not uh, had a mm, truly realized being introduced as our nature of a mind. On the practice would become kind of wishy washy. Then, uh, then Walter last that, uh, you know, whatever is now, but at, at ten times, nine more times. But like, mm, now not a familiar right? mother and the son connection didn't make it stably. Then a clear light arise, but a very short arise and disappears almost the same. Then we missed that um, opportunity. <coughs> but a second. Then, from manifestation of this Dhammakaya, an upstarted wisdom display manifested visually, you can see outside of it, all kind of light. This sun is a, uh, we can't really gaze the sun. We do wear sunglasses, right? But a hundred thousand times brighter than this sun, that kind of light. And the sound, you know, lightning and thunder, and a thousand times more than that, unbearable sound with the Dhammata sound. Then a form of a wisdom deity, a wrathful form. Peaceful form, male form, female form, and attraction form, all kinds of. This, they're so proud. Then, that kind of time, what we have to prepare now, this visualization, <coughs> meditation, visualizing deities. This deity also not have any part of outsider. We have a deity. This body is a palace of a deity. Fifty-eight wrathful 
deities and the crown chakra we call the conch palace means actually I, I guess it is brains <laughs> you know Russian uh, language I think called it that brain from the skull is a conch palace uh, 58 Rafa deities and the heart chakra 42 peaceful deities. You know, this is a, our activity residing in the, our heart, but uh, activity how when we can, the still you can think, uh, mind. You know, all concepts, thoughts, is, works in the brain. Um, I will tell you other silly stories. This is in 1984, I came to America. I think this is in 85. Uh, um, I was in the Spokane, Washington, and uh, some my friend driving to Seattle. Then he asked me, when we American said, mind means we well, this is the mudra for the mind. And uh, you guys should talk about mind pointing here. Uh, he said, what? I know a few words in English. Uh, this bedroom for mind. This is the office for mind. <laughs> <laughs> and uh, we Tibetans uh, Lazy. We spend a lot of time in the bedroom. <laughs> uh, you Westerners are so smart. You spend a lot of time in the office. <laughs> that, that much I can say uh, in the word. But uh, actually, all this body is a totally palace for the deities. It already exists. We call the deities, and uh, uh, you know, scientists look and the, uh, what called microscope. Microscope. They look uh, so many not insects, what <laughs> cells. Yeah, they has that, but a different point of view. You know, that one point of all of this wisdom deities. Dakinis, each single year, or Dakinis, you don't have a Dharma point of view, ordinary phenomena at all. You know, my mind is the original Buddha, my body is the whole manifestation of a Buddha. Deities means totally pure, without a subject, without object. It doesn't have any partial, but the Dharmakaya itself doesn't have any partial, but unobstructed radiance, display, manifestation, out of all this universe, inner body, exactly the same. We don't see this as so small, and especially I'm a very short person. <laughs> you know, it's, it's the same thing. Our whole universe will look like a bigger, and that this body is smaller than a bigger point of view of a dualistic mind. Wisdom mind doesn't have a partially size or limit. Everything is a contained in the one sky. That point is. Anyway, then we do believe, we do recognize, we meditate. Meditate, our body is a deity. Meditate, our speech is a mantra. Meditate, our mind is a dhammakaya. Being what that wisdom body, wisdom speech, wisdom mind, that's the call the practice, right? Making this habit, mental thought habit, then all of this 
not outer manifestation of a Pardo wisdom deity said, oh, there are display of my own Buddha nature, then merges with your mind, with wisdom deity phenomena. This is a liberation to Sambhogakaya Buddhahood. Then again, we're not making familiar preparation now, then this bright light comes overwhelming. I can't handle it. I don't like that. This is your own display light that you are afraid to. Uh, we Tibetans say, uh, donkey are afraid of too much uh, grass. <laughs> your food. <laughs> You are afraid to your food too. And the same way we are afraid of light is so too bright and the sound is too loud. Then at the same time our habit of uh, afflictive emotional mind, whatever you can take next life under six different lights, they are gentle, comfortable, easy going. Then we choose that. Then all this the uh, deities manifested. Then the scaring, uh, we call it, you know, Lord of Death. Then a uh, lot of detail, fearful phenomena uh, appears. These two uh, first uh, luminosity when you recognize. You can attain the Buddhahood of Dhammakaya, second as a Sambhavakaya. Then, then you will know I'm dead. But um, you don't have uh, shadows, you don't have footprint, you can't uh, stay one place a moment or moment a different. Uh, uh, phenomena, it changes. Then mental habit to go back to family and they're eating food, you can sit with them, they want to see you, they're ignoring you. All, all kind of fearful things, then <coughs> after that happens. But uh, still there's a chance. Six different memory of now our practice. You remember wisdom deity, you remember your view, you remember your teacher, you remember your samaya, you have a, a faith and devotion, you have a loving compassion to confused to be. Either of these six different concepts, you have a chance to think you can be reborn in the Nirmanakaya. Pure land. And even though minutes start, then you have to um, look for next life's birth, next body. In between longest time, the uh, teaching talk about it takes 49 days, seven weeks to, and uh, not that longest time, but it can be your yeah, first and second doesn't take any time at all. There's no time in between. But then, still what do we do? We have a genuine devotion, trusting to your own Buddha nature and uh, <coughs> trusting teachings and uh, practice and especially you know Vajrayana we have a lot of mental exercise of <coughs> deities. Then normally
how to choose the next life, that bird. As the next life, the mother, <coughs> everything look like a, a palace, but unnecessarily all good at all, but losing, you don't have the capacity, then it can be taken any kind of next birth based on the pattern. Uh, that term karma, karma takes. But uh, we having now deity phenomena, then you have to remember these six different things. Then you will have a chance to see actually next life. Then you have a capacity to choose your practice, faith, and devotion as strong enough. Then you, you know, you totally not blow out by karma like a feather. It doesn't have anything. Then a wind direction coming, wind blows, feather goes. You don't have any control, but a practitioner still we do have a control. Through blessing, this pure samaya uh, is a <coughs> next life, your parents, father, mother, they are the Dharma practitioner, positive being, and uh, how to aim towards that. And, uh, and the parents uh, is kind of and, uh, whatever there's an uh, animal or any other kind of beings, even though human beings are necessarily positive, uh, then the next life is a textbook. But uh, that's why we're making auspicious prayers now. Truly powerful. Whatever we make a wish, that a mental habit there, through that kind of connection, Buddha's wisdom, compassion, your faith, and devotion, when connected, then you have a capacity to choose next life. You can choose country. And especially precious and among the six wrong human is the best, the highest you can choose that. Then we do have a visualization, form can be deity, and uh, uh, your speech can be seat syllables, meditation, concentration, and uh, you can choose like a, your parents, wisdom deity, male and female. Your consciousness can be see the circles. As it goes to their womb, then it becomes again positive life as a beneficial. As it continue, regularly continue. That way, so this makes all of that how uh, makes a good connection mm, based on the mm, death, success, or not. Now, preparation, you know, it's just like our trip, text, what we need passport and a wallet. <laughs> cut a cut <laughs> and a pack of suitcases and whatever you need preparation how much uh, to good then your trip can be just like that easy uh, this basic idea of um, then I will tell you Mm. Some stories too.
This is a story from my dad. My, my dad is a very famous Western crazy. <laughs> this is not a lot of normal. He does demonstrate all kinds of, you know, he put a sword, put a nut, and a white and a black stones put it together like a doll. Uh, all kind of uh, some people like him, some people are afraid of him. <laughs> uh, this is based on the his he told me this story. Uh, story is very simple. There's a Tibetan Tanka painters, right? Tanka who painting Tanka. Then he had a, a, one lady taking care of him, make a food and bring tea, all of that. Then she mm, brought a tea to Anka Tanka Pandra. Mm. Then she's looking at Tanka Pandra's really funny looking figure is painting. She's not a practitioner or anything. Uh, but uh, that uh, form is uh, uh, she kind of not uh, really funny looking. Mm -hmm. Then she just said, Uncle Tanka Panda, what is that figure? Then uh, uh, Uncle Tanka Panda said, uh, you know, 100 deities he's painting. One of uh, Tsurima is a Tibetan, Tsuri Pushu Sermon Dahyu Gang. Tsurima, female deity, is a, sorry, is a deity's name. Tsuri Pushi, the head, head uh, is not a human head, it's a bird head. That a bird name is a Pushi. Semo is a yellow, is a female. Uh, Daishungen is a holding bow and an arrow. That's what he told her. Oh, that's so pushy, similar, that's your game. <coughs> okay. She <laughs> doesn't, doesn't matter for him. It's just a funny looking, that's all. Then, uh, then when she died, all this deity appeared. Oh, that is so pushy, similar, that's your game. It's my uh, uncle, Panka Panda Charming. Yes. <laughs> She recognized it. And at that moment of her recognition, she took rebirth in Thurman's Pure Land. You know, interesting things, that time, when we separate our mind from the body, this is like a human, uh, uh, human energy, human body, as even though there are enlightened beings that take a birth to human, still this is not a forever, but a subtle obscurations. And as soon as now, why I said at that time, nine times more multiply our knowing one, that lady just knowing that she saw visually, and she heard that name and the color description. And through that way, and that time, and truly she recognized it and deliberated to the pure land. And uh, <coughs> we have a story, one lady talking to her teacher. Um, she said, uh, when day you talk about a, a beneficial, positive quality of a virtues, of course you can be attending enlightenment. 
even though I'm an old lady, I'm, I'm also hopeful. On the, <laughs> the day you discovering uh, negative about non-virtuous action, of course I don't have any hope, but you also be careful. <laughs> Danger for you too. <laughs> Uh, and uh, and uh, like that kind of, and a positive point of view, even though that much knowing as a multiplies that the time, so much helpful. Um, only I know that much. And uh, I can stop talking here, and uh, anyone has uh, any questions, answer. Try if my broken English you are understanding, then you can make some questions. Yes? First of all, I think your English is very good. That proves you smart. <laughs> <laughs> you put the puzzles together well. Um, if you've been practicing different um, uh, pra different deity practices, and after death, is it confusing if you have different deities that you are familiar with? Or no, no, no. Deities, inconceivable numbers, but all of them display all single things which is a, your essence mind is a originally pure dhamma dhatu, dhamma kaya, whatever you can say. It's manifested, but a deity individual doesn't have a self-identity. All of them, ego display of one dhamma kaya. For example, like uh, this house, inside this room, this light, you look from outside, each window you can see uh, as a different. We talk about uh, there's a one monkey in the room. Monkey looks at every window. Then outside people see that many monkeys, but actually one. And, and a similar you know, wisdom Deity doesn't have an individual. Uh, it's all ego. All ego, same display of your own enlightened nature. When you believe that one, not only uh, wisdom deities are exercising mental, but uh, Finally, when you become good at that whole phenomena, only you want to see any impure phenomena. For example, like a wisdom mind is a, is a totally different than our dualistic mind. Um, Then different phenomena based on the individual degree of that how much inner wisdom develops, that much manifest. Um, we have a story of one yogi you know, he's a meditation experience and visited six different realms. Then he, his wisdom display, a whole phenomena, whole six realms looks the same for him. Then he goes to the hell realm and the people, ouch, oh, and they're, they're crying, and all of that. He goes, What's wrong with you guys? This is Lotus Park. You know, that is reflection, inner reflection. Not a really all good or bad, all of that judged by 
dual is to mind that that of phenomena appears to us. For example, oh, we call the pure land, Buddha fields. No place. You can go outside. And there's a no map, no way to, nobody can describe. Because the Buddha field is a display of your own mind. And, uh, you know, that uh, wisdom is more, and the display is and become Buddha. And the sentient beings phenomena, and uh, each a different realm. But uh, there actually any place, never run to go higher, there, and the hell run to go down there. Not exactly, uh, physically, I don't think it exists, Buddha's point of view. And, uh, uh, you know, Tibetan yogi Milareva, And he said, uh, if you're capable to look at by your wisdom eyes, pure land is right in front of you. And uh, pure land is never change power practice. You know, who has a skill to travel two feet away? Never change is two feet away. Because here to here, <laughs> If you can exit from uh, consciousness, from crown, and you are immediately devachan is there. He says that devachan is two feet as far <laughs> from your mind. And therefore, deities, any deity, when you do practice, they all um, only different between Buddha and the sentient being. Sentient being's mind is a, a pieces of a mind. Each one has a little shell and a looking outside, like a little hole. Buddha's mind is like a truly open, like a sky. You know, this is a partialness of one merges. And the temporarily is a partial, we have a shell of this body, but the emptiness inside of your palm too, when you open this sky, outer sky, merges, become one. Uh, and the deities of manifestation, therefore, main, this is called the believing system of faith. That's Everything, no matter Buddha phenomena, no matter sentient beings of phenomena, one single source of Dhammakaya display. Display is exactly the same. Sentient beings that are partialness, inseparable or oneness phenomena to make a little piece of a self, then we start there. Then we believe that way. This is called the confusion. Confused being that's not real. How do you know that's not real? Because it changes. That the true Dhammakaya never changes. No matter what kind of earthquake uh, and uh, water, anything cannot burn this sky, cannot blow away by wind cannot bury under the earth, it's untouchable. That's the called uh, enlightened mind. Then just we believing that we're simple believing, we have some clue, that's a great. Uh, otherwise, uh, this our uh, each one essence of our mind is Buddha nature, enlightened nature. But the nature of God is changed by dualistic concepts. Uh, at the dualistic concepts, if you can relax and rest as your mind truly merges with the like a sky. That happens in a way. Uh, any deity is a tr 
actually doesn't matter male, doesn't matter female, doesn't matter wrathful, doesn't matter peaceful, all of them different expression of the Dhammakaya. That makes sense? Thank you. Thank you. Okay, go ahead. Just one quick question. Okay, first of all, thank you so much for being here. Um, many of us uh, in the West hope to have a good death. None of us know what our deaths will be like. And for most of us, we will be able to control other people who will be helping us. Um, and oftentimes, a painless death is what is considered a good death in our society. And sometimes that means using uh, painkillers right up until the very moment of death. As practitioners and as maybe ordinary people too, um, are, it is a problem. Mm -hmm. uh, yes, a uh, uh, beautiful question because it's a practical. <laughs> uh, you know, that uh, um, dying person, dead person, and uh, lots of helpful for the taking care of that. Um, probably, I will tell you other story. <laughs> uh, our Sangha, at the Dale, he's the original Boston. He lives here, then he moved to California. Uh, you know him, right? Then, uh, and finally he died in the Colorado. Then uh, one day he went to doctor. Doctor said, sorry, I have a not good news for you. You will live, never be more than two months. Hmm? He's a great practitioner. He said, oh, good timing. My money ran away anyway. <laughs> good timing. <laughs> then he ended up in, in the uh, what, for hospice, right? Then a hospice doctor, if he's going to die, then the doctor said, sorry, anything we can make a comfortable for you? Uh, anything we can help you? No, I don't need any help. <laughs> I'm a Buddhist. I died so many times. And death is not a big deal for me. But don't bother me. Leave me <laughs> uh, comfortably, peacefully. And to take out all these machines. Um, that's the only easy <laughs> request. <laughs> uh, it's such a beautiful how to have a, a, as a non-believer, uh, they can say that, but it doesn't not mean it. He believes that. He did practice. He has that confident. <laughs> a, a good time in my money ran out anyway. <laughs> uh, and the same way, as a helper can be, you know, this, uh, and especially in the West, these uh, fancy machines uh, look like uh, helping peaceful, but uh, the machine can, your life is ended, but the machine can make it breathe, that kind of. Uh, I can't make a decision, uh, individual and a family, they can make that decision, but uh, my re recommendation is that's not a good idea. Uh, because uh, this only is my <coughs> road guru. Don't say till and over much. Uh, he's in the Dalhai. My <coughs> nephew died in the New York hospital. And uh, then Ramusha uh, <coughs> calls, checks uh, every day. Then he's dead. 
And he told me that uh, before dying in the hospital, if, if he dies, his own life is ended. Let have a peaceful end it, whatever his own karma, let it finish nicely without a, a holding, a touching, and especially these machines. People can see the peaceful, but inside a really torture feeling. Uh, don't do that. And he say, he say like that. And a lot of texts said it's a match. Of course, how much is a, a certain level we can help for, but a certain level give them little peace is most helpful. Then uh, we have a practitioner, there's a <coughs> called the Nyongro. Uh, it's a, uh, we call it Dizichene Dharma, Dharma medicine, the nectar, whatever, this is collection of thousands, thousands Buddhas, relics, and uh, mixed with a <coughs> herbs, then consecrated by Lama, and uh, so many numbers, millions, million number of combination consecrated. That kind of anyone at the dying or not a dying, we do take a busy throw in the water. How many uh, animals in the water when they connected with that taste has the power to liberate. And uh, then we have uh, <coughs> other. Um, and the Tao group, there's a yantra, mantras, and came from the treasure, you know, Guru Bhutsya. Buried the treasure, treasure revealer, <coughs> then finding that kind of the, the yantra true when your life you can wear with you, when you after death you can, you know, whatever body burned or buried or whatever, keep it with your body as a. Um, become like a, our passport, your neck, and gatekeeper will let you go. <laughs> uh, that kind. And uh, then a total, uh, actually, liberation through hearing, such as like uh, six tantras, and, uh, and Bardo Manam, there's an aspiration frame, Bardo, someone can say any kind of mantra. And when they start breathing, you can say, uh, they can hear that kind of mantra. Then I really look at this, the Western machines, you know, tape recorders. All this you can tape, play. Doesn't matter outer resolution, inner resolution, they can hear it, that. <coughs> and uh, you get a liberation. Um, then uh, we say when exit consciousness from your body, uh, touch here, this spot. Whatever touches mind goes that way. Then exit. Uh, it's a liberation. That's why Mirareva said uh, pure land is only two feet away from here to here. Mm. 
that kind of really beneficial. Then, uh, <coughs> until 49 days, uh, if, it, uh, if it believers, it's good to do every week. That the same day, same time, this uh, person died. And that time, do any kind of virtues. And the offering is the best um, light kind of offering because of darkness. They have a, like a flashlight where you can go find a path. Uh, light offering is important. Then it's good to be realized being. They can make a prayer, make a connection. For us, like a um, practitioner who has a faith and devotion, making connection. That person and the Buddha, hi, shake, uh, shake hand. <laughs> because our faith and devotion to Buddha, Guru Che, Shakyamuni, Amitabha, Archelesic, any kind of wisdom, we have a devotion, we have a loving compassion to this dead person. That mega connection, you know, Guru Mishra's wisdom and compassion is like a hope, and our faith and devotion is like a ring. Then that connected, then uh, that's it. Then you can say any kind of you know, prayer. And especially on my experience, it's a really helpful pray to Guru Mishra and to that person. Immediately this life, as I said, immediately wake up and Guru Mishra is pure. Make it that it's a genuine faith, a devotion, loving, compassion. You know, mind it becomes so pure, rich, a matter quality. Uh, in that case, there's an impartial guru which is mind, uh, my mind, and that person's mind has become inseparable state. Uh, that merge and it makes the true relax and open your mind. That has so much power to penetration. Mm -hmm. You know, anyone can help us. Best, you know, Lama realized that wisdom being can do power. Or they can pray has a more power than ordinary people, and the more people can pray, more power. And the genuine is the important part. That's a beautiful question. Thank you. Thank you so much, all of you, coming and uh, you have an incredible patience. You all passed this test of how much patience you have. You <laughs> listen to broken English. <laughs> I'm truly happy. Thank you. Thank you.